In our scripture called the Doctrine and Covenants, the afterlife is divided into four kingdoms. Three are kingdoms of light, and one is described as outer darkness. This lowest kingdom is reserved for the real losers in this life. In the DNC, we learn that these losers have been excommunicated, or in other words, cut off from among the people. These people will go away into outer darkness and dwell in a lake of fire and brimstone. They will experience weeping and wailing, gnashing of teeth, and the wrath of God with the devil and his angels in eternity. The celestial kingdom is also divided into several sections. The tippity-top section is reserved for those who have been married in the Mormon temple according to God's polygamous laws of marriage. The lower part is for those who will act as servants to those in the tippity-top part, such as those that are not married according to God's law. An example of this servant class is Jane Manning, who worked as a servant to Joseph Smith while he was alive, and then after he died, she was sealed to him by proxy as a servant. In this 1894 temple sealing ceremony, she was not allowed to attend on account of her skin being too dark of a color. Brigham Young also teaches us that the tippity top part is just for those married in the new and everlasting covenant of polygamy. DNC 132 describes that the way to true Godhead requires polygamous marriage in the new and everlasting covenant. Joseph Smith, as the initiator of the new and everlasting covenant of polygamous marriage, actively increased his eternal celestial kingdom by marrying over 30 wives. Brigham Young and the following prophets also worked diligently to expand their eternal kingdoms by marrying many wives. Government interference with the Mormon practice of polygamy became unbearable as Utah sought statehood. This forced the church to accept the one wife at a time policy in this life. This has made it much more difficult for the modern prophets to expand their celestial kingdoms. But it is expected that by the law of celestial marriage, each prophet will personally be given ten virgins in the afterlife that will belong to him. This will compensate for the government interference in their ability to properly expand their kingdoms. As most people are not allowed the benefits of the tippity top section of the celestial kingdom, one might think this is unjust to be so restrictive on who propagates the species in the eternities. But there is a simple explanation. Having only the fittest individuals participate in propagating the species is a common occurrence in the animal kingdom. Species that have attained the highest level of organization of a society are called eusocial. This social structure includes the division of labor into reproductive and non-reproductive individuals. Naked mole rats are one of the best examples of a eusocial species. They carefully select those that are allowed to reproduce. Breeding animals are restricted to just a few of the most fit members of the colony. 